Yeah, I uh, thought we had a good week. I, I really liked today. I thought it was one of our better Thursdays in, in my four years here. So uh, excited to see if that uh, translates into uh, Saturday evening. So or whenever we're playing, I, I don't know. But uh, you know, I just uh, thought thought it was a good week. I loved um, the honest, raw, transparent conversations we had in our uh, team meetings on Monday and Thursday. Uh, I like the the way the leadership has led. Um, I thought everybody was very coachable, and I thought uh, our coaches did a better job of of planning and prepping for uh, you know a very good football team. And I I, I just I'm, I'm pleased with the week and excited to uh, see if it carries over into Saturday evening. In light of the forecast, have you guys done anything different this week? What balls different? Yeah, of course. I mean, we're this. We've done this a long time. We, we've we've practiced with uh, wet ball drills every day this week uh, for at least a period. So, and not that that prepares you for a game where it's constantly raining the whole four quarters. It's impossible, probably, to to do enough to uh, prepare for that. But but yeah, we've we have uh, worked on some. Yeah, that was the first thing I did this morning in our team meeting is uh, just went one by one through those guys to see, you know, if they had heard from their uh, families. All of them have. All of their families are safe. There is uh, water damage to uh, the bottom floors of several of the families. Um, so we, we hate that and we hope that it uh, res- that it goes down and dissipates really quickly, but uh, there is it, there is some water damage for sure. But uh, the great thing is that everybody is safe and, and accounted for. Have you been a part of any conversations about possibly changing the game time or anything? Uh, Ian, you know, talks to me, you know, about stuff like that. But he he knows me pretty well. I don't, man, I can't control that. And told him I'm fine with playing. Anytime Friday to anytime Saturday, if if they wanted to do that, uh, I I hadn't looked at the radar. I don't. I just can't control that. So just tell me what time we're playing so we can prepare. And uh, only thing I heard in staff meeting this morning from our operations people is that Saturday evening was looking better. So that's that's all I know. Rain and wind. How much will that have an effect on special teams, especially if? You- it has a terrible effect. You have two quarters. And I've played in games before where wind was a real factor. I'm not talking about a nine mile an hour wind. You're talking about gust. Uh, there are two quarters in the game where you're trying to survive. You're trying to um, uh, get out of those quarters as fast as possible, not have to punt very much. And when you do punt, you have to think about things like maybe rugby. Um, just different things. The problem with rugby is if the wind's gusting that much, is that drop is very difficult on the move. So you, it's just a lot. It brings a lot of dynamics into into uh, the game for sure. How success that you've had on defense and with running the ball here recently? Is, would a wet game favor you guys a little bit, maybe? I wouldn't say that. I don't. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know if the elements, uh, if they're that, do they favor us, them? I have no clue on that. Are we going to see less field goals be attempted um, because of how the weather is? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, again, you have to wait and see. Um, see how they kick in pregame. And, you know, the first opportunity we get, I'm quite sure we'll, we'll attempt it and see how that goes and then just adjust from there. But it was good and windy today, not not 30 mile an hour gust, um, but he kicked it uh, pretty decent. But the wind did affect it today; it affected our throws today, and uh, that was good for us to practice. Um, seemed like he th- we threw um, better actually uh, going into it than we did uh, downwind today. But um, you know, but yes, the the wind will will change your field goal strategy for sure. Well, I think so in practice, but 
that uh, needs to translate into a Saturday evening, just like our, our field goal unit, you know. Um, I, I, I'm very hard on kickers, of course, and quarterbacks, but, uh, you know, I tell them, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at putting the, the last week behind us, and this is a new week, and he's kicked well this week, and we threw it well this week, so right now you have my trust. But ultimately you got to perform on Saturday evening. Um, and so, you know, I'm optimistic again this week that that'll happen. Did you get any feedback from some of the calls you put in for review? I did. I did. I was pleased with the feedback. You know, uh, the uh, rules official did not believe that um, many of the uh, false starts were uh, quality fouls. Um, it was, uh, you know, we have a right tackle that was just adjusting his heel to get a better stance. It wasn't sudden. It wasn't abrupt. And just, you know, it wasn't a quality foul on those and um, we had two hands to the face we turned in that were should have been called that weren't on them but um, you know our, 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 our guy does a good job of being really uh, re he really sees it for what it is and you know obviously the uh, targeting penalty was overturned which I thought was uh, the right call there so we're thankful so yeah it was uh, go ahead Thrill, thrill, but you know we got to continue to work with Rocket. Of uh, you know, just he's got to get his head up more, and um, you got to see what you hit, and you can't have that that crown tilting, and um, he's got to be careful. What's the process on that? Uh, with you guys not being in a conference yet, what's the process on the field, and how does that work? Well, our officials are from a conference, so we use that conference head of officials uh, to turn in all of our. All of our calls to, and um, and then he makes his determination on it. But in something like, for something to be overturned like the target, it would go from him to the national office to Steve Shaw, who ultimately has the final say if it's uh, overturned or not. From an in-state recruiting perspective, how much of a testament for your program does it reveal or display when you beat in-state opponents like Old Dominion and Virginia Tech? I don't get too much into that, and maybe I should. You know, I, I don't – We we're great recruiting Virginia players if we think that they fit with us and, and can play. But ultimately, you know, we're going into Conference USA. Um, Old Dominion's in the Sun Belt. Um, we want to recruit the best players and best fit for Liberty, whether they're Virginia kids or Georgia kids or Florida kids or – Winning period helps whether it's Old Dominion, whether it's Southern Miss, whether it's uh, you know obviously beating Power Five schools helps too. But just winning in general um, against teams that have had you know good programs over the past few years and um, it, uh, is always helpful in recruiting. Uh, well, their defense is good, period. And they held Virginia to their lowest point total this year, and they get, Virginia's got a heck of a quarterback and good players and held Virginia Tech to, to really low numbers. And just uh, they're really big, athletic, physical, and, uh, difficult. It's uh, one of the better units we faced. Okay. Coach, looking at the numbers through the first four games, your defense has been outstanding. You are fourth nationally in takeaways with 12. Last season, you only had a total of 11 the whole year. What's been the main reason for the difference this year? You know, that that's really hard to say. The main reason, have we put more of an emphasis on it? Yes. We started in spring practice. We got big boards up. Uh, all over the building on the defensive side that reminds them that's a priority for us uh, to take the ball away. We put pictures up every week of uh, uh, of our opponents and balls that may be a little loose, and, and, you know, we just put a priority on it, and they drill it every single day, um, you know, but it's really hard to put your finger on an exact reason, but it sure does make – uh, your chances of winning go up uh, when you win the turnover battle. Last year, last year, 
the offense for Liberty was the one that smashed the Monarchs, scored 45 points in their win with superstar Malik Willis. This year, you've started three different quarterbacks in your four games. How difficult has, has that been for you and your coaching staff? Yeah, that's a challenge. I think it's probably the first time I can remember in all of my coaching days where you lost your first and second guy for a, for a, some time, considerable time, um, and you had to had to go, you know, with uh, your third and fourth. And we're thankful for JB and for Nate, and they're they're um, you know found a way to win a game last week when we weren't at our best. And um, but it, it's, it's certainly a it's a difficult challenge. Mario Douglas, he's 5'8", 170 pounds southpaw. He certainly is a game breaker. He's going to be fun to watch at this game on Saturday night. I hope. I hope it's uh, dry enough where he can be himself and be a, a, a real factor in it because he is he's absolutely one of our uh, key cogs in, um, in what we try to do offensively. Finally, Coach, uh, you allowed 52 yards rushing versus Akron, 21 yards rushing against Wake Forest. Who are, who are some of the standouts on that defensive line for you? Well, there's too many for me to really mention. I think we're rotating in too deep there, and you know those those inside guys have uh, have been pretty pretty good anchors in those two games, and then our defensive ends have provided uh, additional support. But I think the real thing, and I don't want I don't want to single out names, but I think our linebacker crew is better this year than we've been, you know, with the addition of, of Mike Smith and Akil and Ahmad Walker and and. Tyron Dupree, I think those four guys have played at a real high level um, along with our D-line.